my name is Alexander Jurea. I'm full professor for orthopedics and orthopedic surgery and I'm working at the Medical University of Vienna. At this uh, very honorable institution, I am the head of the adult reconstructive team and deputy head of the department. Uh, well, first of all, what I like about the system is its modularity. As you can see, you can choose from short cemented stems to cementless longer stems. You can also uh, mix the different sizes, one size up and down. In total, we do have three sizes for the femur as well as for the tibia. And one of the most innovative issues from biomechanical point of view is that the system works like a primary knee replacement because the transmission of force goes from the femoral part to the polyethylene into the tibial part so that the axes which have to uh, bear very strong loads are not primarily weight bearing. Only in severe varus and valgus the axis come into mechanical, uh, uh, um, I would say, load bearing. But other than that, this knee system works as a primary and this gives us hope that the longevity of the system is uh, quite good. Another point is that in this knee system, the CFR peak, as you can see it here, this is a special uh, uh, manufactured and uh, biomechanical proper um, plastic part is the first time introduced into a knee system and uh, this was done due to a high resistance of mechanical load. So from the mechanical principle or biomechanical principle I think it's a very modern system. It offers a very good modularity and is not too complex uh, for the daily use in orthopedic uh, routine. Okay, okay. Uh, well, actually, I, I've treated at least 150 up to 200 patients with Enduro system, and uh, it was shown that there are more or less two types of patients who really can profit from the system. The first are uh, patients who have severe primary osteoarthrosis of the knee joint with various or valgus deformity more than 20 degrees or neuropathic um, arthropathies of the knee joint. And uh, the other group are the patients who have to undergo revision after infection, periprosthetic fracture, or aseptic loosening. Um, I know in the literature it's, or it was in the past, uh, almost a no-go to implant a system like this in a severe primary, but we do have very good experiences with uh, uh, long-time results of more than 90% uh, of survival after nine years of follow-up. So these two groups, severe primary, elderly patients, as well as revisions of any kind, can profit from the Enduro system. Well, yeah, I mean that the main indications are, of course, the bone loss and ligament insufficiency. And talking about the bone loss, the system comes with wedges, who can be placed distally on the femur, dorsally in the femur, or on the tibial part. So you can really compensate quite properly for these defects. And we do have these wedges in four millimeter steps from four, eight to 12 millimeters. And the ligament insufficiency is compensated by the rotating hinge mechanism himself. So you can see that it is a very stable product which doesn't allow a medial lateral uh, insufficiency and has a rotational component of the polyethylene part which allows uh, a rotation to 12 degrees inward or outward rotation and then this is also 
stopped by a mechanical mechanism, which is intrinsic part of the system. Well, that, that's also a big advantage of the Enduro system, that the instruments are very precise. I just grew up with other revision systems and you start with a wonderful plan and you start with bone preparation as precise as possible and the longer the operation is, the more freehanded the procedure becomes. And this is, to my knowledge, the first uh, system that offers very precise bone cuts and preparation system that provide a very good press fit for the implant, especially on the epimetaphysial part of uh, uh, the knee joint. Well, the Enduro, as I mentioned before, is the first knee system that has the CFR peak, carbon fiber reinforced peak, as a, a bushing and, and leading material for the axis. And now after 13 years of experience, I haven't seen a single case with failure or debris of uh, these uh, plastic parts. So this seem really to fulfill the demands that we were expecting it from and it's uh, resistant in comparison to normal polyethylene and I come from, from a clinical institution where we do also a lot of bone tumors and have to implant tumor prosthesis who are running mainly on the axis and we always had problems with early wear of this polyethylene so I'm convinced that this CFR peak is a very big advantage and step forward in terms of resistance material. Well, in, in this system we do have here the possible lift off of three millimeters. This was just introduced to get a high flexion, even if you have obese patient with an impingement in, in the dorsal part, so that it can be lift off for two to three millimeters, but there is also a dislocation stop. So a separation of the femoral and the tibial part uh, should be avoided, and I've not seen a single case where a dislocation between the femoral and the tibial part uh, occurred in clinics. Um, we were following the Endura system now for uh, almost 12 years and I published uh, our early results uh, several years ago. We did a two-year study and a five-year study and the two-year study was actually a collaboration with another um, institution where we reported on the results of 152 Endurers and then I published uh, the midterm results, the five-year results. And recently we were able, and I'm proud, that we could publish our seven years result of the Enduro. And we included 73 patients who received the Enduro with a minimum follow-up of seven years. So the average follow-up was nine years. And from these 73 patients, there was only one patient lost to follow-up. 16 patients died due to other causes than the knee replacement system and 56 patients were liable for clinical and radiologic examination with a minimum follow-up of seven years. So I think this study gives us some idea about the performance and the longevity of the system. And uh, the main results are the survival and the clinical outcome. The survival shows an overall survival of 76%. In other words, as we were just going for the competing risk analysis, the cumulative incidence for revision 
for any case was 23.6 after 7 and 10 years. And in this publication, we were also introducing or we were following a new classification of failure modes where we could identify what is the performance of the prosthesis itself. And we found that this prosthesis failure showed a cumulative incidence of only 6% after a minimum of 7 years which brings us to a prosthesis survival of 94.4% after 7 and 10 years, which is a pretty good result, I would say. And uh, what were the other findings from this study? When we look now on the clinical outcome, we were investigating range of motion, uh, Oxford knee score, Womack score and, and of course the knee society score and what we found is that our patients no matter if they were primary or revision they reached a relatively high level of performance early after operation so after three months and one year they had very good clinical outcome and this outcome stayed over the observation time on a very high level. So range of motion was on an average after three months 110 degrees and after nine years it was 115 degrees. And in terms of patient's outcome, the PROMS, the WOMIC score was after nine years 2.5 and the Oxford knee score was 32.6 and this is just a group of very very either uh, uh, old and, and low performance patients or patients who underwent revision for several times most of the time. So the, the results to me are quite promising in terms of longevity and in terms of functional outcome. Yeah. Probably before you ask that, another finding that, that uh, we just investigated was what, what are the risk factors for revision of the endure system. Because when we're talking about a, a survival rate of 76%, so what happened to the 23 others, and we found out that the most common complication was due to infection. And we found a reinfection rate of 30% in our patients who were treated by this endure system. And the risk factors for, for um, uh, revision was uh, calcul calculated by GRACE test. And it was shown that there were two risk factors. One is infection, prior infection that leads to a higher revision rate and the second thing was uh, the diagnosis. So patients who received the enduro due to severe primary osteoarthrosis performed much better and had less complications than the revision group. And this is uh, also shown in the survival rates. Primary show a survival of 90%, revision of 67% after minimum of seven years. Well, uh, actually, especially for the Enduro system, I'm very much looking for the extension gap balancing. Why? We want to avoid hyperextension of the system because this leads to insecurity for the patients and even endangers them to fall and probably produce periprosthetic fractures. So I'm very eager in, in just balancing the gap in extension very tightly so the type extension can be avoided. And this can be done quite easily because you can put the wedges either on the distal part of the femur or on the proximal part of the tibia so you can close the extension gap very well. The flexion gap to my experience is not a problem because the system allows a very good performance in terms of flexion as I told, after three months, an average flexion of 110 degrees was achieved, and this was just even improved 
until nine, the ninth years of follow-up up to 115 degrees. Well, actually, there, I think most of the surgeon will agree that we just try, try to leave as many and as much soft tissue and structures as possible of the natural knee. Uh, but in cases of contract knee situations, like in a fixed severe valgus deformity, or even in case of uh, a knee prosthesis infection, where you had a fixed spaces in place for, let me say, six, eight, ten weeks, and you have to face a very contract structure and situation of the knee joint, I do a collateral ligament release by dissecting the insertion on the epicondyles. And when you do so, uh, then the, the collateral ligament can adapt again and form a scar tissue around the knee joint and create an envelope. Uh, and this is not a problem for good exposure or for good alignment to dissect these collateral ligaments as first of all they can scar and form a nice soft tissue envelope and secondly the knee system itself compensates for the loss of collateral ligaments as all the rotating hinges do. Thank you very much for your attention and I hope that uh, You've got some helpful uh, information on this knee system. Thank you a lot.